Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jan Lahoda. Uh, I work for Oracle on the NetBeans IDE. And today I would like to talk about uh, custom code analysis. So first of all, let me show you this slide. I'm sure you've seen way too many times already. And now l let me start with, with some kind of motivation. So in each bigger project where uh, there are multiple people working, there are some anti-patterns, things that, that uh, the developers shouldn't do, but things that they typically do because it's maybe simpler or they don't know they should be doing that or whatever other reason they have to, to use to use the, the anti-pattern. So for example, in NetBeans, <coughs> pardon. In NetBeans, uh, when we have a project uh, instance, uh, we shouldn't look up uh, this in project information uh, interface directly in the project's lookup. We should use some utility method that will pull up the project information from the lookup or provide some default implementation if there is none in the lookup. But people still, from time to time, write the, like type the, the first, the first uh, variant which lookups the interface instead of using the, uh, the utility. And so it would be good if we had a way to, to guard against, um, against such mistakes to guard about us usages of these anti-patterns. And the question is, can we do that without writing tons of Java code? And the answer is, yeah, we probably can using uh, the NetBeans language for declarative refactorings, where we can use just the just part of it, part of it that finds pieces of code that, that matches, um, that match some pattern. So we can specify a pattern that we want to find and report a warning on, on a code that, that matches this pattern. So for the example from the previous slide, we would have, we could have a rule like, like is shown here, which actually fixes the problem. But if we will use just the bold part, the, the good, the, well visible part, it will find the, the, um, the places in the code that, that use the, the, incorrect, the incorrect pattern and report that, that code. Which, bring, which uh, brings us to, to another question. How do we check the code that it, that it is not using the anti-patterns? We write a script that or we declare the, the anti-patterns in some way and now we need to, to check the code that it doesn't, doesn't uh, use the anti-pattern. Uh, so in NetBeans, if you open the file, it will un underline the, the, the line that violates, violates the, the like, condition. In, in uh, current trend builds, one could use source inspect to, to check for that also. But it still requires some action on, on our side, something we need to do. To see, to see whether there is some wrong code or not. What would be better uh, is that if we could run this, this, these checks inside the continuous build, then it would be run automatically for us. We, we would see the, the results for the whole project. And we wouldn't need to, to like do something, it, it would be the, the mistakes will be pushed into our face. And the question is how to do that. And what, what we can do is to use a standalone runner, a standalone runner for the, for the uh, custom rules. Uh, and th there, is, there is a wiki page with some, with some details about that. Uh, and this, this standalone runner is basically a very stripped off, uh, very stripped off version of NetBeans packed into one jar that can be easily run, that can execute the 
the rules that can also run standard uh, NetBeans warnings. It can even uh, perform the, the changes if, if you have some rules that, that actually do some changes, then the tool can actually do them to the code. But that is not, not the main topic of this talk. There are bindings to, to Ant and Maven for, for this standalone runner. And I should warn you that this is still a little bit, or still a lot, work in progress. There is still a lot to do in the future. So now, let me talk about the NetBeans uh, language for declarative refactorings. It, as, as the name suggests, it allows us to, to declare the refactorings in declarative way or more precisely, almost declarative way. We can, we can go, go or fall back into Java if, if we need to, to do so. The language is similar to Java in, in some aspects or embeds parts that are very similar to Java. Uh, we, can, we can do some API changes with it much simpler and change code structure in some cases and so on. As we are using it in, in this talk for checking for RT patents, it's obvious it can be used to, to guard uh, against anti patterns. And we can also say, hey, how many clients are calling this method with this parameter zero, for example? And it can tell us which, which uh, callers are passing parameter zero to, to, to some method, for example. So a quick interaction into how this all began, at least from what I know, uh, in year 2000, uh, in Sun Labs, there was a project Jackpot founded that was created to improve IDEs and uh, improve the way people develop code. And it created some interesting technology, some interesting tools, and one of these one of these tools was a tool for uh, automated code transformation. It was based on, on the AST from Java C even at that time. There was, uh, let me say, working prototype. And it allowed to declare the transformation either fully in Java or using a custom declarative language. Uh, in NetBeans, we adopted the right model of this tool in NetBeans 6.0. And basically, at that point, one could write in, in Java transformation tool or transform code using, using uh, this, this right model. But we didn't have uh, the like, declarative part of, of the transformation engine. And this, this declarative part was revived and put into NetBeans 7.1 uh, under name Jackpot 3.0. And now let me talk about the language in which we can declare the, the refactorings and or declare uh, like the checker for the anti-pattern. Uh, the, the file that, that contains the, the rules can contain any, any number of rules that, that look like this, which basically consists of two main parts. One is the, the source pattern, the piece of code we are looking for. And then there can be any number of target patterns. That means the target of the transformation, the new code that we would like to see in, in, the, in the source code instead of the old one. And in this, in this presentation, we will mostly focus on the, on the first part only. As I said, we can have any number of such rules in, in one file. Uh, defaults uh, typically end with extension .hint, which is the NetBeans name for this. And if we place them in, under, under meta if upgrade, uh, it will be automatically picked up by NetBeans and it will do the underlining in editor and so on. 
Okay. Sorry. Now, let us see what, what can be the source patterns, the, the very first part b before the, the uh, before um, the conditions. So it, it can be various things. It can be basically any Java expression. It can be a statement. It can be multiple statements. It can be a class, variable, or method. And it should be possible to include several variables, methods, and classes as well. Uh, because like, if, if you would be looking for, I don't know, system or print line that takes empty string, it's probably not the most useful rule ever. Uh, we, we need to say that we don't care about some part of, of an expression or about the value of, of a parameter. And for that, we can use identifier starting with the dollar sign, which means whatever is, is in the code at this place is fine, and bind that into the variable uh, under, under the name of the variable. And if we, if we start this variable and end this variable with a dollar, it, it will consume any number of of uh, trees. Oh, I, I, I should have stressed out that uh, this, this language is also based on, on ASTs, so th there is, is a lot of places where piece of code and AST node means, means the same in this language. So uh, identifiers starting and ending with a dollar sign uh, will consume any number of AST nodes. And the difference between consuming one and many is, is shown on, on this, this example. The first, the first pattern will match only such invocations to arrays as lists that take exactly one parameter. The other one will match any invocation to arrays as lists regardless of the number of parameters. They can be zero, one, or, or, any, other num or any other number. So it, uh, an important point is that if a variable is used more than once in, in the pattern, the engine itself will enforce that the AST, ASTs that would be bound um, to each of these occurrence are st structurally the same or in in some like meaningful sense. So for example, in, in this case, if, if we have fields A and B, then assigning A to B will, will match this, this pattern above, or I mean this pattern. And assigning this A to A will match the pattern as well, but assigning uh, B to A will not. It, it, this, this will not will not match this, the, this pattern will not match this, this code. There are some a bit special cases where um, the syntax of, of the patterns deviates from, from standard Java or from, was, from what was told before. Uh, so for example, for statements, if, if we want to match a statement, we can use a variable and a semicolon, and it will consume one statement. If you want more than one statement, you should use multi multivariable, which starts and ends with a dollar sign. But what's important, we, we need to end, for statements, we need to end with a semicolon so that the pattern can, reco can um, recognize that we mean a statement. In some cases, uh, where a tree is optional, for example, in for ifs, the else section is, is optional, we can use the variable starting and ending with a dollar sign to express that we don't care whether, whether that part is in the code or not. For modifiers, um, we, can, we can use uh, the, the multivariable uh, as well, with it, and it will consume basically any modifier, including including any annotations under under the the variable. <coughs> Pardon. 
th there is special form for, for um, matching uh, any number of catches because without this special special handling we wouldn't be able to express any number of catches go in, into here. And there are some very special special forms for very specific uses. Now we have seen that, that the, the rule consists of a of the source pattern, then some conditions, and then some target patterns and, and conditions. So let me talk about the conditions now. The, the, there are basically three types of, of conditions. Uh, the first kind is, are conditions that are defined directly by this language, and these are in sense of and, and otherwise condition. We will talk about them later. Then there are some standard conditions that are also defined by, by uh, the engine, but not, not directly by the language, and we will see them as well. And then one can define custom conditions, and that is why I say that it's almost declarative. And we can, we can combine the conditions with the end sign, and then the combined condition will only be true if all of these conditions are true and we can negate the, the result of a condition as well. So l let me go into the, into the language conditions. Basically the most important condition in, in this language is the instance of condition and it requires that a variable, that the expression bound to a variable is of some type. So for example, we can look for uh, invocations of is empty on string and not for invocations of is empty on, on a collection, for example. And then there is condition otherwise that can be applied to, to the fixes or to the target parts. And uh, it's valid only on the, on the last target, uh, target pattern and it will be chosen if no other target pattern, pattern uh, if the conditions for no other um, no other uh, target pattern are true. And uh, just quickly about the um, standard conditions that are defined by the engine. Uh, they are basically methods hard coded somewhere, so they are invoked as as method invocations, and there are quite a few of them. Uh, there are conditions for pattern matching, so that. Uh, we can require that the AST bound to a variable full is matches some other pattern. It is useful sometimes that the AST bound to a variable contains or does not contain some, some other pattern and so on. We can inspect the element that corresponds to, to whatever is bound to a variable so that we can check that if you are assigning to a variable whether the variable is volatile or not, for example. We can inspect where the, where, um, the piece of code that, that fulfills the source pattern occurs in, in what class, in what package, so that if you are in a bridge that bridges the, the some new API to some old API, we can disable, we can disable uh, the, the warnings. And there are some other random checks for null literal and, and so on. So now let me show you show you a short demo. And okay. So let let us imagine we have some model that is used by, by some clients. And th this model needs to be locked. And so there is, there is this, this write lock method, for example, and it, it returns a lock, and lock then has an unlock method, as you can see here. And the users then Need, need to, to lock the model, do something to it, and unlock it. But what, what the clients may do, might do is they 
they may not unlock, unlock the model inside the final section. So result, the result of, of this will be that if something goes wrong in the at element, at element method and it will throw an exception, the model will never be unlocked. So <coughs> to, to guard against this, we can, we can create a rule like this that basically says if someone takes a right log, then does it is this someone takes a right log, then does whatever, what, whatever is done, and that, then the lock is unlocked, but there is no try finally because there is no try finally in the, in the pattern, then uh, you should produce a warning. So now it, it produced a warning like this, which is not very useful. So we can, we can add some, let me say, display name for it. That should be more, more clear. And now, OK, now we have something that, that warns us in the editor that we are doing something wrong. But we want to see that inside. Uh, in, in the continuous build as well. So let me commit, oh, sorry. Let me commit this into, into the repository. And now the build is started, but it, it won't do anything because uh, the, the build is not configured. So I will configure the configure the 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 build to, to run the, the analyzer so that I, I will call a special goal that is uh, called jackpot Rio analyze and I need to enable uh, and I, I need to, to scan for the warnings in, in the compiler output which can be done using the warnings plugin for Hudson using using this scan for compiler warnings option. And we are looking for the Java compiler warnings here. Yeah, okay. And now when the project is, is built one more time, which will take a few seconds, we see there are some compiler warnings which actually come out fr from this rule file and say that we should unlock, unlock the lock from, from finally. Now let, let me go back to, to the IDE and have a look at, at another part of, of the model class. We are adding a change listener here. And let us imagine what, what happens if someone adds a brand new instance uh, like calls the add change listener method on a brand new instance that uh, is not stored anywhere, then it's unlikely he will be, or the client will be able to, to remove this listener and it may cause a memory leak. So that, sorry, we, we can go to, to the hint file and create a warning for this. Like, like here. And so we, we found something that, that may go wrong, created some rule for it, and then we need to, or then, then, we, then we commit that into, into the repository. And let's see, let's see what happens. So it needs to run the build one more time. And now we see there is, there is a new warning and it tells us there is some class that we didn't see so far that is actually breaking this, this rule that we set up that we shouldn't pass a brand new instance of listener to this a change listener method. So we can, we can look. Oh, sorry. 
we can look how this class looks like, looks like and we see that we have the warning in the editor and we can do something about that. And I also said that this, this tool can run the standard uh, NetBeans warnings and for, for that we need to, to enab enable some of them and I, I have a Maven project here and so inside it I will, I will declare some configuration file and I, oh sorry, and using the show GUI option of, of the, the analyzer, I will bring up a, a dialog that allows me to, to set up which warnings should be, should be run on the server. So let me enable this threading one and and we will need to to commit that into the repository again and see what what will be the result like no, now it's it's checking it's running some, some standard net means warnings and we, we will see if if the code violates them or not so Okay, apparently there are some violations or some warnings produced, produced by this. And we see there are five new warnings inside the model class and it basically says that we are synchronizing on a field that is not final, which is not very good because it's not guaranteed that we are synchronizing that all, all, all the runs through, through the synchronized block are synchronizing on the same object. So that is how it can, can run the, the rules, how it can run the standard NetBeans warnings as well. And now let, let, let me uh, show you some what other sessions we have related to this and where, where, there are, where the, the format for these, for these rules is, is defined. So first, we have a tutorial tomorrow that goes very deep in, into the language and talks basically about every aspect of the language. Then we will have another tutorial tomorrow that shows us how to do static analysis uh, using the Java C uh, model for Java because the, the declarative language is powerful but not almighty. So sometimes there are things so maybe complex that one needs to write them, write them in Java. Uh, and if, if you would write them using, using NetBeans API and uh, against the Java C APIs, then they can be principally run uh, on the on the server as well. The the language is described uh, on on this this wiki page, and there is a repository under Big Bucket with um, quite a few examples uh, of how how to define some some transformations using the language. So now let let me wrap up this session. Uh, the NetBeans language that allows us to declare uh, custom, custom refactorings can be used also to, to check for some anti-patterns for, for things that we don't want to see in our code. And we can check for, for them or guard against them also during uh, the continuous build. And we can also check for the standard NetBeans warnings that NetBeans provides in, in the editor using the same, same technique basically, or the same standalone stuff. So thank you for attention and question. Uh, 
no, it has to be exactly as, as it's written in, in the pattern. So if there is, like if, if the unlock would be in a block on its own, then, then it would find it. But if there would be, I don't know, an if statement, then the, this on, on itself wouldn't find it. It can, it can be written a little bit differently and then, then, it, then it would find the unlock also in, inside, inside, for example, if statement. But if, if it's written this, this simple way, it, it will just catch if there is lock, something, 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 unlock. Okay, is there any other, ah, okay, please. Ah, fine. Uh, yeah, at least at least some of them, yes. S some of them can be can be defined easily, and in some cases, it might be. I think it's surely possible using the custom condition, which is a bit more complex, but not that much complex. And I think in. At least some checks can be performed even using like the standard conditions for this. And so, the ref, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, not really. That's, I, I would say that support for things like this is, like, I, I would like to see a form that, that would allow to, to describe such, such constraint, but there is not, nothing really simple right now. So I yeah, thank you for, for the questions. So are there any other questions? Yeah, okay, please. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't understand. It, Not right now, but it could be enhanced this way, I think. At least in, in, in the sense as, as, long, as long as the goal is in, in Mayon is run, it could, could be allowed to, to fail the build, I think. It, but I don't think it's, it's implemented right now, it, that it will actually do that. So, yeah, so if there are no more questions, then thank you and goodbye.